Welcome back to Tech Intern, guys. If we haven't met yet, my name is Jason Goodison. I'm a software engineer at Microsoft. I help you get your next internship. Today we're talking about that first inter internship. How do I get the first internship? When this question comes into my head, the first thing I think about is, you know, your resume. Where do you make it? How do you structure it? Second one being, how do you study for your interviews when you do get one? Third being, you know, you don't have any marketable skills. What skills are marketable and, and how do you even structure that? And the last being, what are good jobs to apply to? Let's just kind of go through those one by one and we'll go from there. So the first is your resume. Now, if you go to Waterloo, you've done PD1. So here's my advice. Go ahead and make that resume, print it out, make sure it's on nice colored ink, uh, get it with you and then just kind of it's not that I'm telling you that there's nothing you can learn from the PD resume tutorial or whatever your university resume thing is. There are some, there is some good advice in there. There's stuff about how you should use action words, you know, use words like demonstrated, implemented. They have a few little bit of nuggets of information in there, but by far and large, it's just not a very good resume you'll come out with. They're trying to check a box. They're not trying to get you your next job. Make a resume for them. But when you go to make your own resume, you're probably going to want to use a different template, maybe even talk about different things or use different words, which, which kind of sparks the question, where am I going to make my first resume? Now I want to do an entire video on like what tools you can use for making resumes. Cause I've used a bunch over the years to save you from all of this talk. I'm just going to tell you, uh, my recommendation would be Figma. Go ahead and go to figma.com. Um, find some community resumes for free and then just go ahead and use one of those and fill in your information. Biggest mistake people make is that they'll make their resume two pages long. Now let me tell you something, the industry standard is one page per 10 years. If you're coming out of high school with two page res with a two page resume, that's not what you wanna do. Make sure it's one page. The average recruiter will look at your resume for six seconds. Do you really want them to spend three of those seconds flipping the page? Now I've got an entire video on this um, and it's in, I'll, I'll link it in the card. I don't know if the card pops up here or here. Um, and I, I really think you guys should take a look at those videos for resume specific questions. So what I wanna do is quickly jump to that thing about marketable skills before I get into how to prepare. So in the marketable skills section, volunteering, leadership, first jobs, clubs you've been a part of, you're not gonna have many technical skills to put on that resume, but that's okay, you don't need technical skills. Talk about how you worked in a fast paced environment talk about how you worked as part of a team, talk about how you had leadership skills, non-technical guys. Holy f holy sh oh my God. I'm gonna leave that down. So what I was getting to, you have the, what are your marketable skills? They're gonna be things like, they're gonna be things that are like soft skills. And when it comes to technical skills, what do you have? Well, if you're in Waterloo, you're, you have probably just racket, which is not really a marketable language. If you put racket on your resume, you're not gonna get a job interview because you know racket. Um, it's not used in industry. So what's the next best thing? Well, I talk to people about this question. I always prompt them like, what is the first language you should learn to make yourself marketable? I asked Javin, um, I asked Tech with Tim, actually he's a, a YouTuber. I feel like I kept coming back to Python. Um, and if you know racket already, it shouldn't be too difficult to learn the syntax for Python. And then you can kind of say that you know Python. You know the syntax for Python. And since you know Racket, you can transfer those skills into Python. Um, if you know a language, like if you've done Java, I, I did a little bit of ActionScript 3 when I was in high school. So I put that on my resume. Um, even though I didn't really know it, I just know, knew it a little bit. I wasn't proficient in it. But the point being, you know, put whatever technical skills you have on there. Now, what jobs are you gonna get in first year? There's a bunch of programs like the Microsoft Explorer program. I think there's a Google version of that where they basically take first years that don't have much coding experience and they show them a great summer and that's what everybody wants. That's what they have their mind set on. You know, they're gonna go to this big tech company in their first internship and it's gonna be a blast and there's only gonna be puppies and roses and it's probably not what your first internship is gonna look like. I highly recommend you apply to those jobs, but the overwhelming average is that people don't get those jobs, right? I mean, they can only accept a few candidates and they have hundreds of applicants, sometimes thousands. 
let's like get some more real perspective. Let's say you apply to a bunch of programming jobs and you're not getting anyone, any responses back from it because you don't have marketable languages on your resume. What's the next best thing? When I was in first year, I kind of observed what other people did. Javin, who's a software engineer at Uber, his solution to this was to become a QA and to do some kind of software testing. He went to Pivotal Labs and his idea was to get his foot in the door and then his next internship, he could go back as a dev. And that loop actually worked. He went as a QA, he tried to do some programming on the side also, um, apart from his regular job. And they did offer him a return offer, which I don't think he took. That's not what I did. However, I went to a service desk role where I basically was on the phone. People called me and said, my windows isn't working today. My outlook's not working today. Like help me with it. So that's not programming at all. And the way I kind of got my foot into a programming internship was I went above and beyond in that internship. Um, and I wrote a Python script that automated a bunch of these tedious tasks we did. So when you're looking for that first internship, it doesn't necessarily have to be a programming internship. It might be QA to get your foot in the door at a company. It might be service desk like me. Even if it's not programming, you can find a way to incorporate programming into your job. Find a way to automate some process, to fix some inefficiency, and you're gonna get rewarded for that. And once you put that on your resume, it's kind of like you had a programming job because you have a job where you did programming. Um, and that'll help you get your next internship, which is exactly what happened for me. It's exactly what happened for Javin. Now I want to go back a little bit to how do I study for an interview when I get them? Essentially, you're, if it's a technical interview, you're going to be studying probably lead code and probably cracking the coding interview. Cracking the coding interview is a great book you can use that basically lays out all data structures and algorithms and the questions that are common to come with those. And lead code is of course, just a place where you can actually practice those coding questions in a browser. Um, one thing I think you should, you guys should definitely check out if you haven't checked out lead party yet, that's a Chrome extension I made. It's completely free costs me like 15 bucks a month to run <laughs> and no ads, no sign up, no, no kind of bullshit like that. Use that to lead code against your friends. So make a, get a group of friends, you know, Friday night, you guys can't do anything because of COVID anyway. Um, grab a group of friends, get on lead code and use that Chrome extension I made lead party. You guys can make a room together, find a problem and compete against each other to get the best solution to that problem. And uh, that's kind of, that's gonna make lead code a little bit more fun for you. So sure that's a little bit of self promo which i don't like to do on this channel but i'm not making money off it man it costs me 15 bucks a month to run um, and in terms of non-technical questions you're gonna you're gonna have a lot of non-technical questions probably in that first year one really great exercise to do is a lot of non-technical questions kind of come down to tell me a time when um, those tell me a time when questions they tend to often point to the same few scenarios come up with your your best accomplishment your biggest failure come up with a time when you overcame adversity think of these like scenarios these basic scenarios in your head of a time when you did such and such and most of the time when they ask a question tell me a time when whatever follows that you're going to be able to pick from one of your predetermined scenarios like something you've already thought out so for example they say, tell me a time when uh, everything just went wrong. That's a real question I've had before. Tell me a time when everything just seemed to go wrong. And what I do is go, oh, you know what? How about my biggest failure? That's a really good one. So I just say, here's a time when everything went wrong, when I had this really big failure. And here is how I came back from it. Here's how I bounced back. Here's how I solved the problem. And here's how I learned from it. So I was able to take one of those scenarios and, and kind of fit it to the question. I'm gonna do an entire video about studying for those interviews. I actually did a talk about it, so uh, I'll be able to use my same notes. Another thing I've been really thinking about lately is coming up with a coding competition that I run and I donate a prize to, maybe a few hundred dollars for the winner. Uh, but I really want it to be big and I want people to actually be engaged in it. So uh, if that's something you think you would like, um, you know, let me know in the comments section. Let me know with a subscribe. These are things that I'm trying to build a community here and I need your help to do that. So let your friends know, you know, shoot me a message. If you like stuff, all of that is, is so helpful to me. And, um, I've gotten a bunch of comments so far. 
I just want to thank you guys so much. I hit uh, about 225, 230 subscribers the other day, and I haven't even had time to make a video to thank my first 100, never mind my first 200. So I can't thank you guys enough for your love and support. And uh, yeah, so thanks guys so much. I will see you in the next episode.